Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Why Factor. I'm Shreya Upadhyay and I call this episode special because uh, the union budget will be presented by the finance minister on the 1st of February and one of the most important stakeholders in the whole process are the youth of the country, Young India. And today that is why it was important for Why Factor to reach out to all of these youngsters and talk to them about what they feel about, you know, what their expectations are from the budget, what they feel are the challenges for the Indian economy and what lies ahead for the Indian economy to become a $5 trillion economy as the Prime Minister envisions it. So here we are at the Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow's Noida campus, talking to all of these uh, students about what they uh, expect from the union budget. The union budget is one of the most watched events in India that involves many stakeholders the common citizens, industrialists, retailers, investors and manufacturers. It is the country's annual financial statement presented by the finance minister and finds mention in Article 112 of the Constitution of India. So what does a union budget comprise? It gives a detailed account of the government's expenditure and income. And how is it prepared? All government ministries States and UTs assemble their plans for the year, including their income and expenses, and present them to the Finance Minister. The FM then meets all stakeholders like financial bodies, businessmen, economists, on the advice of whom the budget is prepared. Now how does the government earn its revenue? First is taxes. Direct tax includes that given by individuals and companies, while indirect tax is given by consumers as part of purchase of products and services such as GST, other sources of income. This was about how the government earns. How are government spendings categorized? First is revenue expenditure, including day-to-day -day expenses like paying salaries, pensions, manufacturing expenses and insurance. Second is capital expenditure, including creating assets and investments in land, machinery and projects for long-term growth of the country. Then there are schemes, Next is work of different ministries and finally subsidiaries like in petrol, food and fertilizer cost. This was about earnings and spendings. The union budget comprises the capital budget and the revenue budget. The capital budget accounts for the government's capital payments like long-term assets and receipts which are loans from public or the Reserve Bank of India. The revenue budget records all revenue receipts that is earned and spent in running operations in that particular financial year. Now why is the budget important? 1. Because it tells us how the government plans to earn and spend. 2. It reflects the state of economy. And 3. Because it ensures proper handling of inflation and deflation, thereby stabilizing the economy. The union budget is presented in the financial year that begins from the 1st of April till the 31st of March. Uh, hi guys and welcome uh, to Y Factor. First and uh, foremost, uh, you know, if I could ask you what your wish list is for the union budget, uh, three things that you would want as a youngster, uh, what would you like those things to be focused upon in the union budget? First, tell me your name. My name is Aksham. The first, uh, out of the three things, that first thing I would like is that government should focus more on agriculture. As government has also envisioned that they plan to double the farmer's income by 2022. So if we accord more priority to the agriculture sector, then I believe that achieving a target of $5 trillion economy as well as doubling the farmer's income will be achievable. My name is Lokesh. So government should focus on raising the tax slabs so as the common, get, common man can get the be more benefit out of it and the more money can flow in the economy and so as purchase power of common man, the common person of Indian common man can increase. Right, tax slabs of course uh, uh, is one of the most important things that the common citizen uh, is concerned with and I know a lot of you uh, have their wish list ready. Hi, what is your name? Hi, I'm Anshu and uh, first and foremost I would like, uh, like LTCG to be removed because uh, there was a massive change last year when LTCG was bought, uh, brought under the pur purview of taxation. So my expectation would be to increase more capital, equity capital investment from, uh, the, from our side so LTCG should be removed and it should be made non-taxable. Uh, firstly, I think that it is pretty, mo pretty more important that we focus on the consumption side of the economy and I specifically feel that, you know, if the focus shifts towards um, sectors which are human intensive, 
uh, as in the case with manufacturing and agriculture i think it's going to help us you know stimulate that kind of growth because it is going to have a multiplier effect on, as per the gdp uh, you know on the gdp thing and specifically i feel that bringing down the uh, gst rates on the automobiles from 28% which is in the current slab to 18% and apart from that you know bringing down the gst on the agricultural equipment is going to help you know uh, improve the current economy so you know uh, you talked about manufacturing sector and uh, this is something important that i want to ask that you know how do you boost that sector especially amid you know the kind of trade war that is going on between us and china and it's we know that it's not just affecting uh, those two countries but it, it's affecting global economy how do we tackle that and especially uh, you know in the context of the indian union budget how do we boost the manufacturing sector i think rural consumption is the key to this uh, manufacturing if you want to increase consumption it's going to be th through the villages where the you know and digitization which is one of the priority of the government if we increase those schemes then the you know demand is going to come a lot from the rural sector so that is one key area which the uh, uh, finance minister should focus on to increase the demand and consumption you wanted to add something uh, no i was talking about the flip side as uh, harish rightly mentioned so i come from an organization where i was leading women in technology department so my expectation here would be to increase more of uh, women in stem to encourage them more especially the sukanya scheme if you see the statistics right now we have 4.4% of uh, you know female population between 10 to 15 age group so increasing that from 10 years of um, you know limit to 15 years will actually boost more of you know uh, demand side and that will increase the capacity utilization so exactly exactly women in manufacturing how are you boosting them you have startup initiatives but then how are you trying to you know um, from making it more women centric to making it more women leading oriented so that's what my view would be because uh, yeah yeah so you know i think that's interesting because uh, i remember the last time the finance minister uh, uh, gave her uh, uh, budget she talked about uh, taking women uh, from being nari to narayani right and uh, you know that is something uh, that you know encourages of course uh, as women right uh, you know what are the kind of changes that you see and she talked about women uh, in entrepreneurship how do you think that has changed over the few years so i think um, there has been a lot of change and uh, rather i would like to you know draw your attention to the areas where uh, women were not there and have come up especially in areas of finances but then i would also like to draw back to uh, the question that w what are the areas that government would like to invest in and i would um, like to talk about infrastructure and one idea that i have in this place is that uh, you know the automobile sector like he said can contribute uh, to the recycling industry Uh, which can then you know come back to the infrastructure uh, increase employment so this is actually a cycle that can uh, stimulate the economy and of course uh, i don't think it would be a woman or a man game uh, the whole of india has to come together and uh, you know strive to make it a five trillion economy absolutely you know uh, uh, gender of course uh, as you said doesn't uh, play a role we all have to come together but of course uh there still needs to be a lot of focus on women you know especially uh in education something as basic as education i remember uh you know last uh, times budget also talked about higher education and women uh, are still in less in numbers in our country right basically there are two sectors uh, everybody is talking about manufacturing and agriculture so because i am working on rural, rural area primarily through skill india project so what i have observed that skill india is one of the project which government has launched it's one of the dream project because skill india is a key driver for either make in india or agri agriculture or infrastructure projects so there has to be distribution of investment in rural area as well because when i visit lot of rural area in skill centers they want opportunities at rural area so that will create manufacturing that will boost up our agriculture product so that will boost up our gdp so we have to focus more on those small small entrepreneurs creation uh, basically there are four main component of the uh, gdp like consumption government expenditure investment and uh, net export so government should uh, majorly invest on uh, agriculture and rural sector i would like to start my point with a statement by chief economist geeta gopina that she said that india is responsible for 80% of the slowdown in the global economic trend so it augurs good for me because it's good 
now india is dictating the terms india is being listened to and looked for to now so i want to focus uh, you know more on startups because that's where young india uh, is uh, you know working a lot and there is a lot of focus by the government as well on startups uh, you know just the fact that it started startup india uh, is evidence enough that uh, you know it wants to help its uh, young entrepreneurs i'm sure uh, you know all of you have had uh, people who are uh, uh, you know who've started their own ventures and you know how do you see that uh, ecosystem changing apart from startups the ease of doing business rankings we have gone up but the ease of doing farming what is that we are looking at because everybody says we need to focus on agriculture any focus on agriculture cannot be uh, complementary with the climate change one of the greatest loss to indian economy today is we lost 40000 uh, pro rupees in the kerala floods a total of 3.8 billion dollars have been lost to us due to climate change so what are we going to do on de-risking our entire agriculture against the monsoon because the entire agriculture today that we have is dependent on monsoon once we have a good monsoon we say the gdp is booming up once we have a bad monsoon we say the gdp is coming down so what are we going to do about it because the water resources are constrained in the country the air quality index are coming down uh, the skill labor is still in need in some areas whereas in other areas we find abundance of unskilled labor so are we tackling it in a systematic level instead of just doing a bandaid solution for every problem that we have so i think we need to focus more on the climate change aspect so that the agriculture gets booming we need to focus on the water resources if we can improve the swimmability we call it easy Uh, easy swimmability of water resources or availability of water resources we will be able to move the agriculture up instead of investing directly into the agriculture by looking at the other aspects to it all right you know so interesting point there that uh, climate change is something uh, that young india uh, wants the government to focus on and rightly so you know we've we've had very serious concerns and impacts of climate change uh, and of course it's directly related to our agriculture our farmers uh, how can we do that you know uh, what are the small simple steps that we can take to boost the agriculture sector and work towards doubling the farmers income uh, related to environment uh, i want to say that government should focus more on micro irrigation levels because the our uh, agriculture is depend on the weather and the rains and also they should improve our insurance policies like uh, they have implemented the uh, pradhan mantri uh, fasal bima yojana but that is limited to only the owner of the farm it, sh- it should cover the tenant tenant farmers also so it will increase their uh, it will increase their sentiments and apart from that uh, i want that government should uh, encourage the startups in agriculture sector so that will help uh, our agriculture economy that will contribute to the gdp in fact yes in fact i was coming to it that you know why not have a lot of startups there to boost our agriculture sector right yes uh, definitely we need a uh, lot more startups in the agriculture sector along with that i think government need to also focus on the on how they can reduce the pollution in the environment um, and in in previous budget i think there was not uh, many thing or many schemes which was launched to reduce the pollution so i think that is one of the most important factor and uh, uh, that also includes the uh, push towards more of the electric vehicle which was there but the with the cost of high cost of electric vehicles and the whole Uh, uh that makes it very difficult for for indian consumer to buy a, a expensive 20 30 lakhs electric vehicle so i think uh, government needs to com- uh, prepare a whole infrastructure where they can uh, we can produce the cheaper electric vehicles and uh, they can produce the lithium ion battery uh, so that is that con- contains a major cost of the electric vehicle so i think focus on that will also improve the environment along with the improvement in the uh, manufacturing side and also that uh, india is a signatory to the sustainable development goals which has a 10 year period and it starts from this year onwards so the government has to focus on agriculture where the focus has been on tomato onion and potato the top so the household is very much concerned about that so the redistribution and production the government has to look into that secondly uh, as far as education is concerned which would then lead to more skill labor so the government's policy the new and new education policy which has come up where the government aims till the class 12th education to be free the government has to find funds for that so that people can be educated till that level and also that uh, the msme sector which is one of the biggest sector almost employs 40% of the employable population of the country has to be boosted where the government is of course taking steps by the taxes and the other in the, uh, mechanisms but the government would have to look into those there is a scheme called as uh, kusum which is being pushed by the government which uh, pushes solar pumps so such schemes along with the uh, required ecosystem in the agriculture and energy sector can have cascading effect which can you know uh, improve the gdp overall so everyone is talking about agriculture but i think agriculture should be in a synchronization with the technology as well because technology is something 
Uh, especially there is a concept called drip irrigation that is developed from Israel. And some of the states like Andhra Pradesh and uh, Gujarat, they are they are um, they are implementing in their own states. So the ba the basic problem with the drip irrigation is the initial setting of the cost is too too heavy. So especially the Andhra Pradesh government, they are giving up up to ninety percent subsidies. So if if some of the states in the similar fashion or central government, they don't have then separate entity or something. They have the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sincha Yojana. It's an and the amount of allocation of the resources is allocating is very very little. So government should focus on this. So technology is something very important. Uh, uh, you know that the government should focus on. And as youngsters, we know that technology is so important in life. You know, uh, in today's life, especially. Uh, and of course, uh, you know that. Focus on research and innovation that the government has always talked about. Uh, last time's budget also had a lot of focus on it. Uh, but you know, how do we go forward in this? We know that uh, you know we are digitally penetrating into our rural areas. But what else needs to be done? Oh, I would like to talk about uh, innovation and research in pharmaceutical industry. Basically, uh, we are importing 80% of raw materials of pharmaceutical industry. Government has introduced uh, tax uh, redemption for 200 tax, 200% tax redemption for pharmaceutical industry, which has now. Uh, gone to 100 percent. They have reduced it, so that has actually uh, not encouraged or discouraged, uh, in fact, research and innovation. So I would request government to uh, introduce itself again, so that uh, companies can uh, invest more in research. More drugs are uh, prepared here, and we are secured in times of emergency like war and calamities, and we are secured by drug as well. Uh, more focus should be uh, given in the IIT, uh, IIMs, like people who are into research and development, because many people are going abroad. So that's why, uh, right? And uh, you know, there's uh, something that you guys uh, she pointed out uh, very importantly that uh, you know people are going abroad to study, and that is something uh, that I remember last time uh, was also talked about that there was something called the study in India, uh, which basically aimed to get people, uh, you know, foreign students to India to study. Uh, how do we uh, tackle this? You, of course, we've got IITs and IIMs, but. You know, we also need to, uh, you know, better and improve uh, our other institutes. You know, a lot of uh, everything, you know, can't be relied upon on our IITs and IIMs, right? Actually, the problem is real that we are suff India is suffering from brain drain right now. So to counter the brain drain situation in India, we need to step up the infrastructure and skill uh, skill the students and skill the professors which are empl employed in the universities every state should have at least five world class institutions you know where we can actually have programs outside country you know we can invite students maybe from africa maybe you know from countries you know which actually who are actually seeking you know the students are seeking you know a few places to go and study so every state should have at least five institutions right now we're you know having maximum one iit and one iim in every state that needs to be increased and you know the infrastructure so basically that comes to the point that you know where expenditure needs to be increased so that's the need of the r you know to focus on creating world class institutes improving our existing institutes and of course a lot of uh, focus on higher education uh, yes you want to say something even the learnings, apart from institutes, how much are you investing in incubators? Because we've got a lot of allotment uh, in incubation, but how are you promoting incubation and how are you promoting, so see, ITI exists, policies exist, but awareness is minimal. So how are you segmenting your policies and then targeting them so that, you know, a proper allocation is done? The bridge between uh, the poor and, uh, you know, the rural and the urban, of course, there are government policies, the government is working on it, but don't you think it's our responsibility to, uh, you know, to uh, work? towards it to bridge that gap? I do agree with you and I feel uh, government has made a lot of policies and schemes um, and they are working but you know what the need of the R is is some kind of a window to it. We should have a double-sided barrel where the government is also responsible and the citizens know what is going on. Uh, see majorly uh, if we you know look into all the points that have been discussed till now I think Solving the core issue of you know generating employment is going to help us cater most of the problems. See, at the end of the day, you need to create such kind of overall infrastructure or in an ecosystem where a farmer can sustain himself. All right, um, you know I'm going to wrap this discussion up, but before wrapping it up, uh, there is one thing which involves all of us—the crux of the matter that comes out of the union budget—and that is, kya sasta hoga? Or kya mehenga hoga, right? And that is what matters to all of us. So, uh, you know, one thing, all of you, uh, that you want that it should get cheaper, and one thing which should, or you know, product or service which should get more expensive. I'll start with you. So, I would say healthcare, which is a rising cost. So I would like to say that healthcare should become more cheaper, 
and of course the inflation should i mean also get i mean down that's it agricultural products they should be get cheaper agriculture products and medicines i would say entertainment so uh, movie watching is very expensive these days <laughs> and those popcorns of course that cost a bomb to all of us for you i think gst should be reduced on consumer durables and fmcg products and probably uh, that is one area which i think technology is one area which could probably be rationalized yeah uh, i guess two wheeler automobiles and apart from that you know uh, four wheeler passenger cars below 1200 cc these should be the um, goods which should be become cheaper and obviously luxury components can be you know <laughs> priced higher we should subsidize evs and we should uh, tax the diesel and petrol vehicles i think the housing should get cheaper and liquor could be charged a little more luxury watches to be cheaper <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, education should should uh, get cheaper i think that is one of the most important factor for development of a country in the long run i think uh, tobacco should be more expensive that is something which should be taxed and uh, access to technology like smartphones should be cheaper uh, i think uh, budget is a day when my mother uh, Uh, mother's eyes are glued to the tv so uh, so i would say uh, household goods uh, should get cheaper and uh, talking about uh, uh, expensive things i will i'll go for the diesel vehicle so because it has a lot of impact on the environment so all right all right so i think the big takeaways from this uh, enriching discussion have been that young india wants uh, the finance minister to focus uh, on uh, agriculture on strengthening uh, the startup ecosystem uh, and of course a lot of other concerns like healthcare you guys mentioned uh, and technology and innovation which should be made cheaper uh, and of course uh, more accessible to everyone across the country well we'll have to see what uh, the union budget this time holds for the rest of the country uh, but till uh, then it is a wrap in this uh, discussion thanks very much guys for taking part yes you can give yourselves a round of applause thank you so much uh, well this is it in y factor this time uh, but you can give us your feedback at yfactordidnews@gmail.com till then thank you so much for watching bye bye hello and welcome to y facts i'm shivali khari and today i will be talking about the 10 points that were given by finance minister nirmala sita raman while presenting the interim budget of 2019 and these were the points which are called the vision for the decade here we go in order to keep our environment healthy there's a vision that has been kept for keeping our mother earth green keeping our sky blue and making india pollution free Another prominent vision of the decade has been to make India fully digital to take digital India to each and every corner and sector of India. In space sector also India has kept a goal of launching big satellite programs like Gaganyaan. From infrastructure point of view India is planning to achieve social as well as physical infrastructure in the whole country. India's vision for the decade is incomplete without water management and that's why we have kept a separate goal for water management and for river cleaning. Using our oceans sustainably to generate employment and give jobs and livelihood to people, India has kept a goal of blue economy. India imagines nourished women, children and healthy citizens overall and this we are going to achieve through Ayushman Bharat. Building Team India by Jan Bhagidari is another goal that has been envisioned. In this goal we are going to achieve maximum governance but minimum government. Last but not the least we have envisioned a goal under Make in India initiative of the government where we want to give special attention to MSMEs, defence sector and automobiles. 